It seems life is returning to normal on the Gulf Coast. But appearances can be deceptive. It looks like it has a little bit of oil in the sand that it's washing in. And until all the slick and all the dispersed oil is out of the Gulf, I wouldn't even consider swimming here. Environmental scientist Wilma Subra is a Louisiana local with a long track record of fighting the big polluters. Apart from the oil, she's concerned about what else might be in the water. She believes BP's attempts to break up the oil may have created long-term problems. The dispersant is a very toxic substance that causes a lot of health impacts short-term and long-term. Portions of them are known cancer-causing agents. The other portion causes the headache, the nausea, the respiratory problems. And then when it's mixed with the oil, it's much more toxic than either the oil or the dispersant. And you can inhale it, you can ingest it, you can have skin contact out here. So it's an issue that's really important for people's health and they need to be protected from any exposure. For over a hundred days, nearly five million barrels of crude oil spilled into the sea just off the coast here, creating the world's largest ever marine oil spill and America's worst environmental disaster. And Wilma Subra says it could all have been prevented. If they would have implemented the regulations that were on the books, it probably would not have happened. If they would not have been allowed to cut the corners, it probably wouldn't have happened. The regulations we had tried so hard to get on the books, the enforcement of those regulations, all that was just dismissed by the catastrophic event that occurred on April the 20th. This comes along and just destroys all the things that we've been trying to work for to preserve the wetlands that we had and rebuild those wetlands to preserve human health and it's now damaging human health. For the past three months, Wilma Subra has barely had time to sleep as she drives up and down the coast, documenting hundreds of environmental and health complaints. Super company. Right, right. Wilma has already collected hundreds of cases from residents and oil spill workers who fear they have gotten sick from chemical exposure. And is he having the health impacts as a translator? He wouldn't say that, yeah, because they're all very scared. All right. So here, here is a, a stack that I record all the complaints that come in, but I can't show you the information on the complaints because I'm protecting the identity of the people who call in the complaints because they're very scared of repercussions and loss of job or loss of relatives' jobs. Mm -hmm. But probably about 600 complaints have come in to me, and a large number have also come in to Mary Leor of Louisiana Environmental Action Network. When local fishermen first started working for BP to help clean up the oil, they were given no protective clothing or respirators and were made to sign an agreement waiving their right to any compensation if they got sick. Together with the Louisiana Environmental Action Network, Wilma quickly launched a court case against BP. They said, we'll hire you, but you don't have any claims to any damages to your health or to the environment or to your loss of income if we hire you. And BP nearly got away with that, did they? And BP nearly got away with it if we wouldn't have brought the charges. But certainly now we've been working very much so on workers' uh, health and safety issue. We've been working on getting respirators, protective gear to workers. Every day, um, Wilma meets fishermen who are struggling to cope. In Mississippi. Today, she and her colleague, her Mary Lee Orr of the Louisiana Environmental Action Network, are gathering testimony 
from a New Orleans fisherman who thinks the dispersant made him sick. I mean, and, and there was planes just not three miles from us, like 10 or 15 in a row. And they'd come back empty, and this went on for four or five hours, man. I mean, they were hitting it, hitting it. Oh, yeah, there's your, there's your oil line right there. That's it. Wow. That oh, see that shit. Look at this, Rick. Wow. See that platform out there? Yeah. Gary Burris was out taking photos and video of the oil spill for his parish when he was sprayed by dispersant from a small plane. I'd say the next day I was burned in the back of my throat. You know, like I would breathe it in. Got tired really the next day, and the next day I just started going downhill. I couldn't taste anything, I couldn't smell anything. Mm -hmm. Went to the doctor after four or five days, uh, got on antibiotics because it had gotten infection in my lungs. Uh, my joints were really hurting, and uh, then I got even, it got better. And then the next weekend, my lungs started really getting bad. I couldn't breathe. I had to set up. And I went to the doctor. He saw me first thing Monday and put me on steroids. This is not something that goes away. So we're really concerned about the legacy that this disaster will leave us. We've talked to the fishermen in Alaska. We know that the Average lifespan, most of them were dead by 52, the folks who worked on the spill. The main dispersant BP used, core at 9,500, is one of the more toxic dispersants on the market and is banned from use on oil spills in the UK. It's a total of 1.8 million gallons of dispersant have been used in the Gulf of Mexico with the Deepwater Horizon spill. And never before has this larger quantity been used in this area. The EPA, the Federal Environmental Protection Authority, requested BP use a less toxic dispersant because of the unknown long-term effects of its use. But BP refused, saying it was the only one available. In fact, BP is making the decisions and the EPA, the Mineral Management Service, the Coast Guard, they do not take on BP and say, no, we think you should do it this way instead of the way you're proposing. And the fear is that if an agency overrides BP, the liability for that override will be with that agency. This 66-year-old grandmother poses a serious threat to the powerful oil and gas interests that control her state. As a nationally acclaimed environmental scientist, Wilma has been involved in countless legal cases. A lot of the, the big battles dealt with oil field waste in the early days, about waste being dumped in pits that weren't lined, contaminating groundwater, surface water, contaminating agricultural fields and huge quantities of benzene, known human cancer-causing agent, being released into the environment and having impacts on the health of the communities living near these sites. We had a cluster of neuroblastoma in children. We had a lot of cancers. We had a lot of uh, different things that you don't normally see in a community that size. There are two human populations that are experiencing the most exposure due to the BP crude oil spill. One. So when the BP oil spill happened in April, federal authorities knew who to turn to and Wilma was chosen to give testimony to members of Congress. Now, are you saying that BP still is not providing any kind of uh, appropriate protective gear? They are not providing the respiratory protection and that's where you get the inhalation of the toxic chemicals off the spill and any dispersants. And in fact, if the workers bring a respirator that we've provided them and others have provided them, they tell them they're going to fire them unless they put the respirator away. Over the years, Wilma's work has clearly upset the powers that be. My office has been broken into a number of times, you know. I get threatening phone calls. Um, one individual who was proposing a nuclear radioactive norm site threatened to kill me, my family, and the local elected official and his family. She so even had gunshots fired through her office window on one decisions occasion. Decisions you make. So I had bulletproof glass put in all the windows on the front. I had a security 
consultant come in and he said, move everything to the back of the office. That's why my computer's now in the back, so that you're, you're not so visible up front. The delicate wetlands that line the Louisiana coast are already under threat from erosion, and Wilma wonders whether they will survive the oil spill. Right now we lose a football field size of marsh every 30 minutes. And once we start killing off the vegetation with the oil, it's just going to increase incrementally. The potential is it will take a large number of years for the Gulf and the wetlands and estuaries to come back. And when you start looking at all of the wetlands, which are the nursery grounds for all the seafood in the Gulf, and how much oil has been deposited in the wetlands. It could be generations. Today, Wilma has a meeting with George Barisich, the president of the United Commercial Fishermen's Alliance in Louisiana. Way to go. Way to go. Yeah. Isn't that unbelievable? This is your boat, George. This is the boat that my dad had built. She's as old as I am. My dad had this one launched the month I was born. 54 years old, okay, and he owned it. George and his members are worried about the effects of the huge amounts of oil and dispersant in the Gulf. I understand this, I said five years ago, pre-Katrina, mm -hmm. I had a full head of black hair. Now look at it. <laughs> it ain't too much black and it ain't all that, okay. I said, and I had some, you know, I was built and I had a six pack. Mm -hmm. Now I got a one pack. That's five years. Yeah. You figure out 10 more, I'm going to be dead. The stress is going to kill me, and I know it is. George has read about the 1989 Exxon Valdez oil spill in Alaska and how some of the fish stocks there have never recovered. Then I went looking around where I normally would fish, and one of this place called Deep Water Pass, which I usually make 30%, 40% of my income, never caught a shrimp, not one. So whole blanket areas that are normally super productive didn't hold any product. So you may end up with two or three years of skipped uh, repopulation. So when you look at what went on in the Valdez, is what we have to look forward to here. We have the contamination, we have the kill off of the organisms, and then we have, when they start returning, the bioaccumulation of the food chain. So it's an example of what we have to look forward to, and it's not a pretty picture. We ain't touched the leaf of work of uh, are you now permitted to harvest oysters? No, sir. As far as we know, we ain't got nothing going on. While Wilma takes complaint after complaint from worried locals, this man, Ken Feinberg, has been sent by the Obama government to oversee a BP fund worth $20 billion to pay for damages arising out of the spill. So you in the same type of business well, as Mr. Well, I'm a Reed? retailer. I'm a food manufacturer and retailer. I see. But most of the attention right now is focused on short-term business losses. What you need is emergency help, financial assistance, to uh, cover the fact that you weren't able to go forward with those two contracts because of the spill. Wilma is worried BP could get away without paying for the true cost of the spill. But then what about all the people? What about all the people that are being made sick? Well, clearly, the $20 million won't be around long enough to cover the long-term health impacts because you won't be seeing those in the time frame that that money will be used up. There is very little focus on the long-term, and that can stretch on for many, many years. That can stretch on for the remaining life of a lot of the workers, and that is clearly not being addressed right now.